Hello, I'm Matthew Smith, one of the librarians here at UEA. In this video, we're going to look at how to access PsycInfo and make the most of it. To access PsycInfo, we'll start at my.uea.ac.uk. If we scroll down the page, we should find an Explore My Library tab. And if you click onto that, you'll reach the library homepage. From here, we'll select the A to Z databases link. This gives us a list of all the databases we have access to. Click P and scroll down the page to find PsycInfo. To set up a simple search on PsycInfo, I would always recommend using the advanced search. And what we'll do is pull out multiple key ideas for a particular topic area and add those into the search altogether. Let's imagine we're looking for resources that relate to cognitive behavioural therapy for people with anxiety. In our first box, we'll type our cognitive behavioural therapy terms and we'll separate them with OR. So here I'll put a term for cognitive behavioural therapy or CBT. If you're not sure about any of the operators I'm using here, follow the link on screen for more information. In the second box, I'll put the term anxiety, and I'll then choose to use the drop down menu to select title. This means I'll only see papers where these words appear in the title. We can see that we have over a thousand results here. But let's imagine I'm most interested in recent papers. I can change the date range on the left hand side of the page so that I only have papers published in the last couple of years. I'm also able to change the order that the papers appear in. By default they'll be in relevance order but I might say let's look at the newest articles first. Let's now look at putting our terms in individually and then combining them together. This allows us to see far more accurately what's going on with our search. The first thing I'll do is click on search history. This will be a record of what I have searched during this session. And as we add additional terms, we'll see them appear in our search history. We'll start by putting in our term for Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. Once this search is run, you'll see that we then have an additional line in our search history which tells us we have 1,117 papers which have the term Cognitive Behavioural Therapy in the title. We'll then run a second search for our CBT term. At this stage, we'll want to group these two terms with an OR, just as we did in our original search. It's important to remember to clear your boxes between searches. We click on both lines individually, and then we click the Search with OR option. Let's now search for our anxiety term. We now want to combine our two groups of terms with an AND. To do this, select the line that combines the CBT terms and also the line that includes our anxiety term. Once we've done this, we click search with AND and the two lines are combined. This should generate the same number of results as if we had put all the terms in the box together. PsycInfo allows you to do more than just search using free text terms. We also have access to the APA Thesaurus of Psychological Index Terms. These index terms are tagged to the papers when they come into the database and we're able to look up relevant terms to our topic and then search for papers that have had those terms attached. This allows us to put together a more comprehensive search. 
To do this, we'll click on the APA Thesaurus of Psychological Index Terms link. From there, we'll then type into the secondary search box one of our terms. Let's start with Cognitive Behavioural Therapy. We then see a list of results that the search believes may be relevant to our topic. We don't have Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, but we do have Cognitive Behaviour Therapy. If we click onto that, we'll get more information about the term. And it looks like that's the appropriate term in this case. We'll also see that there are narrower terms that sit underneath this particular term. And if we want to see papers tagged with any of those in addition to those tagged with Cognitive Behavioural Therapy, we click Explode when selecting the line. We then click Add and the search terms will be added to our search box. When we're ready, we can then click the search button. And this will run a search for papers that are tagged with any one of these terms. Having done this, we'll then run our free text terms again, as we don't want to use exclusively index terms, but rather we want to combine them with our free text terms. Once we've run our free text terms for this particular idea, we want to group them together along with the index terms with an OR. To do that, all we'll do is clear our search boxes and then come down to our search history and select all of the lines that we have so far. After that, we'll click search with OR. Now, let's follow the same process for our anxiety term. We'll click on the link to the thesaurus at the top, type into the secondary search box, Anxiety, and then click Browse to see what our options are. Here, we have two terms that could be applicable, Anxiety or Anxiety Disorders. So we'll click on one in turn, just to understand what each one covers. Now you'll see underneath narrower terms, you also have a related terms field. This tells us that anxiety is a term not directly related to anxiety disorders. So papers may be tagged with one or the other. And therefore, after we've run our search for anxiety disorders, we'll then go back and click on anxiety and run a search for that as well. With all the relevant terms added to our search box, we click on the green search button and this will run our search. Once again, we'll then add our free text term for this idea into our search box as we've done previously. We now want to combine together the group of terms that relate to anxiety and we'll do that by ticking the two lines in our search history, one for our index terms and the other our free text term, and clicking the search with or button. Finally, we'll want to group together the terms that relate to anxiety with the terms that relate to cognitive behavioural therapy, this time with an AND. To do that, we select the two lines that have been grouped together. In this case, that's S4 and S7. And then we say search with AND. We'll then need to go down and reapply the date range that we'd initially put in to reduce the number of results back to those that we thought would be relevant for us. And there we are, we now have 448 papers, more than we'd had by just using free text terms. When you're happy with your search, you may want to save it so that you can come back to it at a different point. You have a folder within PsycInfo that you can make use of. And to do this, click on Sign In. Now in this case, the folder is the same as the one that you use for the UEA library catalogue, so there'll be no sign up required. Once you click sign in, you should 
be given access to your folder. Now it's a good idea to save your search as you go, as your search history only lasts the length of your session. So if you step away from the computer for 10 minutes, you may come back and find that your search history is gone. To save your search, what you'll do is select any lines that you want to keep. In my case, it's all of them, so I'll say select all. I then click save searches. And from here, I'm able to give the search a name. I'll call it something simple like example search strategy and then I will select the permanent save search option if it's not already selected. After that all I'll do is click save search and that's it. The search is now saved into my folder and I'll be able to come back to it whenever I want to. Within my folder I'll find a saved searches subfolder and that's where the search can be located. If I scroll down and find the search we've just saved, to retrieve it, all I do is click on the Retrieve Saved Search option. This will then put the search terms back into my search history on top of whatever I might already have in that search history. That being the case, it's normally a good idea to start with a clear search history before retrieving your search. Once it has been added to the search history though, all you need to do is click rerun and the search will be run on that given day. So if there is a time difference between when you save the search and when you run it next, you will find that there will be a different set of papers, as papers may have been added or removed from the database in the intervening time. While we're able to save our search strategy, it's very likely we may also want to export our results. Now that may mean we want to export everything, or it may be that we want to pick out individual papers. If we want to export everything, we'll click on the share option and then select the email a link to download exported results option. Here you're given five file types that you can export to. I would recommend RIS for anyone using a reference manager, whether it's EndNote, Mendeley or something else. You then just put in your email address, click send and you should receive an email with a download link and that will allow you to download the RIS file in this case and use it in your preferred reference manager. On the other hand, if you only want to save certain results, not the entire list, you have a couple of options. You may want to export records individually. To do this, scroll down to your results and click on the little blue folder icon to the right hand side for any paper that you want to export. This will then add the paper to your folder. If you want to export an entire page, I highly recommend flipping to a larger number of results per page via the page options menu. And then under the share menu, you'll find an option to move an entire page worth of references to your folder. If you're wanting to export to Excel, this is the method to use. Once you've put all papers that you wish to export into your folder, you can then go to the folder itself and run the export. Here I've put my records into the main folder and I can then export either the whole lot by simply going to the export option on the right hand side of the page or by selecting individual references that I want to export and then clicking the export option. You're now going to generate a direct download and you'll see that you have additional file types that you're able to export to. If you want a file to Excel for example you can use the download CSV option and all you'll do then is click on the save option and that will export your results directly into a file which you can then use. I hope this content has been helpful if you have any trouble at all, do get in touch with your librarian and I'm sure they'll be able to offer further guidance.